Hi, this is Caleb with Practical Dad's Advice, and we are pushing on into a beginner's tutorial for DAWS Studio 4.8, which will probably be outdated in a year because that's the nature of the modern world, but that's okay. We'll do it anyway, and then we'll just redo it next year as things change. We'll do an update, I guess. So, we covered how to make things visible, we covered how to bring things into the scenes, we started with our basics on the tool sets here, and now we're going to start getting into a little more detail on what all of these gizmos and gadgets can do. So up here you have four little gizmos. This is your basic gizmo, and they actually are called gizmos and it allows you to select and move objects within the scene so if I zoom out I can see the primary gizmo for this character and I can grab these arrows and move her or grab one of these lines and rotate her grab these gizmos move her that way or move her that way okay? all types of things you can do and control Z to undo whatever it is you've done <coughs> the next gizmo is the surface selection tool this allows you to select any surface on the scene so if I wanted to, let's say, I want to make this a different color. So I select that, I go to my Surfaces tab, and now I have all the surfaces for that object. So the coat is the object. See? That is the object. This is the surface that is a part of the object. So I have the material here, and that's the color that they've put on that material. I don't like that color. I want to do this color. Boom. Now I have that color. Looks very nice, very pretty. It's enjoyable. It's great. But she she doesn't really look right. She's wearing the dress and whatnot, but what but she needs accessories. What woman doesn't need accessories? So we're gonna add some accessories. And then we're gonna go on with the other two gizmos. So where are the accessories? Well, they're under accessories. So these are all the accessories, all the, the extras that fit with this character. <coughs> you can add objects that don't fit with a character through the auto fit function, which I have a tutorial on. Um, you can find it on my channel. I'll probably put a link or and or annotation somewhere if I can be bothered. So. I want to put these earrings on her, so all I have to do is click, and click, and look at that. The earrings are on her. They're very pretty and quite stylish. It works. And I'm going to put that necklace on her, and there we are. Now she has a necklace and some earrings, but she doesn't have any footwear. So we're going to do some footwear, and the footwear can either be under accessories, or it's probably under wardrobe and under the wardrobe you can see all the different things and sometimes they're categorized as shoes and sometimes they're categorized as footwear usually they're categorized as footwear it depends on how the creator tagged them while he was making them so we're gonna put those pumps on them but you notice first off doesn't look very good her feet didn't adjust and they don't have a texture on them so I select them materials and that's the texture I want and then I select her and I go to this thing called poses and I go by function and these are all the different poses that fit with this character that were made for this generation of characters so she can be and I want to leave limits on if I can whenever I'm doing things I want to leave limits on so I can put all types of different uh, different types of poses all types of different things she can 
Be a little devil. There we are. Jumping. Yeah, she's happy jump. Different uh, standing. Your standard standing poses. There's the walks. I have some walks. And so all these different poses fit for her, but those aren't what we want. What we want is to make the high heels look good on her feet. So we go to fits, and usually when you buy a high heel model, um, the object, it comes with some sort of fit. And pretty much any of these will work. So there we go. Now she's got a fit. We need, we need to bring her up a little bit because she's off the floor. So there we are. Now well, she's she's looking good. She's she's real happy, but her face is pretty deadpan, pretty expressionless. Which no matter how deadpan a model in Victoria's Secret catalogs look, they still have some expression, believe it or not. So if I click on her head and go to pose controls, and I got head and then expressions, and I got all these different expressions that I can that I can give her. Let's see, what, what do I want? Let's do interest. Yeah, she's interested in something. Don't know what she's interested in, but it's something. She's interested in what you're going to make after watching this tutorial. That's what she's interested in. So, yes. The next gizmo, third gizmo, is the regional navigation tool. What this simply does is it selects... selects things according to um, the region so if I select the entire actor I can select very quickly the sub part the sub parts of that actor so I got I clicked on the head and I can get the face or all the way back to the actor I can grab the hand and that gives me the actor upper body hands and that's just quicker than going through all these bones and trying to find, see, trying to find the hand. There's the hand. That's just simply a faster way of grabbing these specific regions on a character. The last thing is the spot render gizmo, which if I click on it and I click and I drag, it will do a render of what it is I asked it to do and so then I can see okay what does this look like when I have my computer render it out and actually you know finish the product rather than having what they what is called a preview render which is what I've been working with notice that it's changing everything it's making everything much cleaner smoother looks better it's it's calculating the light it's calculating the skin texture it's bringing the colors and all of a sudden we go from what looks like a model in a old video game to a very realistic incredibly pretty looking character and or model face pushing up and there we are and that is a good spot render obviously not a finished finished product but a good spot render we're getting there we can see what it is we're working with we can see um, does this uh, color that we changed here does this work how does that expression look after we render it it's her teeth kind of off color these are things that that are important to, to know and look at is the is the hair going to work on this character or is it going to does it look good in the preview but then when we render it out all of a sudden bam that doesn't really look that good these are the things we get to find out when we do spot renders so those are the basics of DAW Studio UI user interface uh, the next set that we're going to do is intermediate to where we're going to talk about cameras, setting up lights, and we're going to talk about how to change particular settings, um, specifically in dealing with the previewer, the renderer, and uh, s setting up our 
own UI set up to help our workflow according to what it is we're doing, playing with tabs, playing with panels. So this is Caleb with Practical Daz Advice. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, like and subscribe. Leave suggestions for future tutorials in the comments below. Peace.